Virtual switches are very powerful in a lot of different ways, but they can sound a little bit complicated before you start to use them. In reality, they're very simple to create, especially if you're using something like SmartThings Labs inside of the SmartThings app. Once you've created a few virtual switches, deeper and better integrations can be created with other smart home platforms that you'll have in your home. For example, a special type of virtual switch that was specifically created for Amazon or Miss A and that whole smart home platform really becomes one of the most powerful tools that a lot of people have in their smart home. That's because this specialized virtual switch allows you to start routines on Amazon's routine service and that becomes available for anything inside of your Samsung SmartThings system. There are certain device types that otherwise cannot start routines over on Amazon and therefore a lot of things we can't do. Things like leak sensors, temperature and humidity or other types of sensors that aren't motion or contact. You can have your cameras trigger events and really if you'd like even the weather outside can start events over on Miss A's smart home system. So get ready as I show you all of these really powerful integrations that work with smart things and make your smart home incredible. Turning off Alexa Guard. Got it. I'll stop guarding now. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by helping you get much more out of Samsung SmartThings. This is a video that is part of a major series that we're producing here with all these different hidden tips and tricks. Now what you'll find is a list of the other videos in this series down below and therefore if you're feeling a little lost as we go through today's video, you can refer back to one of those. Of course, if you don't know which one to go to for a certain topic, well, go ahead and ask me in the comments down below. Now in the intro I was talking about this specialized kind of virtual switch that we can create to trigger routines over in Amazon system and that sounds a little bit scary and it's a little more complicated than I'm going to walk you through fully today. So something else you'll see in this series of videos is this little graphic that will help you to know that there is a link down below for a resource, another tutorial video, or just a page for you to be able to get this function done. Now I'm going to walk you through the basics still of this specialized kind of virtual switch. What you do is you head into the IDE at account.smartthings.com and then you're going to hit on create device handler. Now there's a link down below to some code that we have saved that allows you to create what's called the Miss A simulated switch and that is the device type that we will choose going forward but once you've created this specialized device handler and you've published that now you're going to have access to choose this device type anytime you create a virtual switch. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to create a virtual switch and we're going to call this the amazing device. Now it is amazing and I'll show you why here in a minute but if you don't know how to create that basic virtual switch go back to part two in this series the video just before that and you'll be able to figure that out really quickly. Now once we've created that in that same IDE that we were in when we created this specialized device handler we will go to that device now and we're going to change the device type and we'll choose that simulated Miss A switch. Then we'll hit update and now our device has these extra powers because a normal virtual switch is just something you can turn on and turn off and that doesn't allow you to use that device in Samsung SmartThings and then have something start over on Amazon's routines. What happens here is that either Amazon or Samsung, when you have these two platforms integrated, they can turn on and off the switch associated with that. But what it will also be doing as you turn on and off that switch is it will be opening and closing a contact sensor. Now, if you know Amazon's routine services, the contact sensor is one of those special device types that can trigger their routines either on an open or a close. So when you turn on or off that switch, you'll actually be giving yourself an opportunity over in Amazon to recognize that that switch has been turned on and off. 
Now, a while ago, we lost what was called Echo Speaks, and a lot of people got very, very frustrated about this, but to be honest, we've always had this opportunity to still get our Echo Speakers to speak. Now, using this virtual switch, any automation in Samsung SmartThings can drive that amazing device to turn on and then over in Amazon, I can use that contact sensor or the switch to turn on my Amazon routine. Now, within that routine, what I can do is play a notification on a group of speakers or a single speaker, and that can allow me to put in any custom thing for Miss A to say. Now that's just one of the many ideas that you will suddenly have, including doing things like triggering video cameras, but I'm going to save all of the ideas or those specialized ideas for automations for part five of this series. And that's where I'll show you a number of different things that you can do with Miss A and Samsung SmartThings all packed together. In an earlier part of this series, I actually talked about my Sono speaker and the ability to pause that speaker or mute it for just a minute and then to bring back the music. This was a really great way to just let yourself hear things going on in your house for a minute or give yourself a minute to yell at your kid to get him downstairs. But what I didn't share was the different ways that you could trigger that kind of a routine and keep it all kind of contained. Buttons are one of the easiest ways to actually do this kind of a thing because you'll know in that moment if you just want to mute for a minute. And so, not a lot of people know that you can integrate Flick with Samsung SmartThings. And that's because if you go to add a device and you're looking up the button device type or you're just looking up Flick in general, they won't show up. That's because you actually have to do this inside of the Flick application. When you're adding this integration inside of the Flick app, what you're going to find is that you can add a single SmartThings location to your account and you will need that hub to have it work reliably. But once you've done that, you can execute all of your different scenes that you have at that location. Now you can't choose automations here as part of clicking or flicking any of those buttons, but you can start a scene which you could then use to trigger automations, especially with all these virtual switches we've been creating. What's really incredible about how Flick has built this system is that not only can you choose a smart things scene to execute, but you can actually pair again Miss A or Sono speakers or Philips Hue or a lot of different services, including If This Then That, all into a single button click. Now, that is incredibly powerful, but Flick buttons are relatively expensive. And if you don't need all that integration with these other platforms all at the same time, well, then there's a couple of cheaper options. If you have a Galaxy smartphone that's showing up on this list with at least Android 8 or better, well, then you're in luck because you can use the new Galaxy Smart Tags, whether it's the Smart Tag or the Smart Tag Plus with Samsung SmartThings. And it doubles as a tracker, so you can attach it to Rover, but when Rover comes in all muddy and gross, you can click the button on there and run an automation inside of Samsung SmartThings to prep the bathroom for Rover's bath. The drawback of these is obviously that you have to have that Galaxy phone and I'm hoping that Samsung realizes their mistake with the device here and fixes that little aspect. In the past I've used the SmartThings buttons which are Zigbee and we should see a version come from AOTech but it's going to probably be a little more expensive and speaking of AOTech I had their Nano Moat which was a decent device connected by Z-Wave, took a custom device handler and was never the most reliable. So I actually think one of the best ones is the cheapest. Even in Canada, the IKEA remote here is $18 and that's, yes, Canadian dollars. And it has four buttons along the outside that you can press or hold to get different automations to occur. Plus the middle button, for some reason, it doesn't have a hold function, but you can press it. This is giving you nine different automations that you can execute with that little button. As you create those different functions, you can actually do multiple things with 
each button pressed so you can run scenes or you can change the mode in your home or you can change the status of any of those devices and there's even more we'll do with buttons as we go but if you think back to that sono speaker now you can create a routine that checks if you pressed that ikea remote in that moment then it can actually turn it back on a minute later to give you that short little pause to a lot of people $18 is a lot of money if you don't need it and you have your smartphone around and I get that and in a lot of cases you can use these fancy virtual switches we've been creating when I have my phone around I often find it one of the best ways to control my smart thing system and one of the ways you can do that is by adding the scenes through widgets onto the home page of your phone I'm always on the lookout for great smart home deals and one of the ways that you can always find a deal is by going to Ikea but you have to watch a little bit what you're buying. Now we already talked about that great Ikea remote and that's a fantastic device but if you want to get a little simpler there's the wireless on off switch which has two buttons on it and both can be used in the held and pressed function giving you four different controls. Pretty much all of Ikea's trad-free or Zigbee-based lights will work, and this includes both their standard lights and this filament bulb, which I really enjoy the look of. But maybe the most interesting component is their trad-free controller, which is a Zigbee controller, and it also connects to a number of different lighting solutions that Ikea sells. These ones are called the Omlop lights, and they're kind of little pucks that just shine out the top. Plus, I also purchased a Lindschult light, and these are are ones that you can overhang over top of your cabinets and have them shine down for you. Plus they have other lights that can be connected and you can connect up to 10 watts worth of devices on this 24 volt loop. Their motion sensor works with smart things, although it doesn't have the best specifications, including a three minute cool down and their power outlet works within smart things as well. So you have all of these options for direct pairing. Plus their trad free blinds and other blinds that are Zigbee based work with Samsung smart things and none of this requires the IKEA smart home hub which a lot of people think they need but you don't and so you can have all of these cheap products into smart things very easily. One of those platforms that you can bring a lot of devices into is EWILink and I love my Econet Controls Bulldog Valve that works within that system and allows me therefore to open and close valves on leaks. There's a couple of devices I just picked up from Lutron and this is very exciting to me because they have a brand new integration and so this is a great lighting and fan control system for your smart home that now works really well with smart things. I saw this question the other day from a user who was trying to figure out how to get their Philips Hue lights that they just installed to show up in the smart things app. The user's problem was that they had already integrated the Philips Hue uh, hub already, so it was already showing in his app. Unfortunately, what he did is a mistake I think a lot of people will make today in that he actually removed his hub and then re-added it in, and then that meant he had a lot of work to do to go put them all back into different automations and different scenes. You don't have to do that and at the very worst what you will have to do is go to the cloud service that we're talking about now I've used a lot of different cloud services and we've talked about a number of them in the earlier video in this series but you know SwitchBot and Yeelight and TP-Link and Tuya or the Smart Life platform all of those plus Philips Hue if you just go like you're going to re-add any one of those devices in most cases it will just bring in the new devices and leave your existing ones sitting there so you don't have to remove these cloud connected platforms. But Philips Hue is a little bit different. You might find this with a couple of different platforms and this is always what I suggest you do first because it's the easiest and it 
springs in a bunch of things all at once. Now, what you can do is you go and you pretend you're adding a device and then you say scan nearby. And this is how I've managed to bring in Philips Hue devices with out bringing in that hub again or deleting it and they just all show up there and I can sit and rename them quickly and then put them into whatever I'd like. Now while I'm on the topic of Philips Hue there's a couple of little tricks with that platform within Samsung SmartThings that I think I should share with you as well because this is one of the most widely used platforms available and they make great products even if they are expensive. One of the great features of the Philips Hue application is that you can go and do these things called Hue Labs. And when you go in there, they'll give you a number of presets that allow you to kind of flow your lights or do different effects with them. And you can then turn that effect on and your lights will sit there and do it. And one of the things that happens when you bring Philips Hue devices into SmartThings is that if you mess with the color inside of Samsung SmartThings with an automation or you just change the color within the device page for any of those Philips Hue lights, you'll stop that little flowing pattern. What's new from Hue is that their Hue Labs control will take over and resume the flowing pattern for as long as you have that feature turned on in the Hue app. This means you can configure lights in this way for use in SmartThings as long as you always want that flowing pattern to go on. Now here are a couple of other little tricks for you and Philips Hue in general has a lot of lights that you can go and integrate directly into their platform and then bring them into Samsung SmartThings for control. Obviously then you're getting these better control options and I've done this with a number of makers and there's actually a video down below that shows you how to replace Philips Hue at about half the price. Now, on top of that, whatever you bring into the app, as long as it's a Zigbee light, uh, light switch or light bulb or even a motion sensor, those devices come in and they are actually paired with the Philips Hue locally. Now, what happens beyond that is if you use Philips Hue devices inside of automations, they can be local as well. So this is one of the very few platforms that appears to be cloud connected and there is a cloud connection, but will run locally with all of the devices inside that Philips Hue platform. Today, both Nest and Ring platforms can be brought in and integrated with Samsung SmartThings. And the Nest cameras can be used as sensors within your security system and cameras that you can review within the whole smart home monitor. Plus, Ring has all of their cameras or a number of their cameras that can now integrate with SmartThings. Plus, a number of their video doorbells can be integrated as well. One of the things that's so powerful about Ring devices is that they can often be used as triggers within the Amazon Routines segment or section as well. So this allows you another way without virtual switches to bridge the gap between Samsung and Amazon. Now, I love SwitchBot and I've shown SwitchBot so many times on the channel, but there's a few devices that integrate really well and then there's a couple that don't and I have a workaround for the ones that don't. Now, the SwitchBot bot, the humidifier, the uh, temperature and humidity sensor, and of course the curtains, all of those integrate remarkably well. And actually one of the hardest devices to get into Samsung SmartThings are IR control devices, which I use SwitchBot and their Hub Mini to control those IR devices. And as you create them, they show up in Samsung SmartThings. So this gives you the ability to IR control a lot of devices with SmartThings. When I received the SwitchBot motion and contact sensors that they just released, I didn't want to wait. I brought them right into Samsung SmartThings and I used that re-adding of a cloud service in order to get them to show up. But unfortunately, right now as I create this video, the statuses don't update unless I physically refresh those motion and contact sensors. So in order to use those, I had to create a workaround. Now, I'm only talking about SwitchBot or the situation with SwitchBot right now. But this is just an example. You could use this for any platform or any device you are struggling with. And the other really nice thing about this kind of a solution is it doesn't even require an echo speaker. All this requires is for you to 
install the Miss A application, integrate the SwitchBot platform, then integrate the SmartThings platform, plus create however many virtual devices or virtual switches that you will need to mirror the device. Now, what I have done for both the motion sensor and the contact sensor from SwitchBot is within the routines there, anytime either of those devices changes status, I change the status on a virtual switch that goes over to Samsung SmartThings. Now I have a motion and a contact sensor status and actually it updates immediately on all three platforms. It's incredibly fast. I haven't seen any failures. This is a short use period time and it won't be perfect, but you can at least use this to get those kinds of devices functionally working. And no, that is not going to be the most reliable way to build your smart home, but it is a great workaround and it'll work with many of those other platforms that we've talked about. But if you want to get more reliable, well, that's what the next part of our series is all about. I'm going to walk you through how to make smart things incredibly reliable and work every time. So otherwise, guys, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.